You're watching Telecom TV from 5G World 2017 in London. And I'm joined now by Uwe Jensen, who is VP Innovation and Research at Deutsche Telekom. Uwe, thanks for joining us on Telecom TV. Now, with all new technology, there are always going to be deployment challenges. But with 5G, it's going to be a significant change. So are the deployment challenges going to be equally significant? Yeah, I think there are significant changes. I mean, if you, if you look at, at new business models, first of all, uh, like network slicing, where we want to have software-defined networks for a certain industry, uh, uh, this requires a lot of automation and other challenges, but it's also the, the just the normal uh, uh, work which has to be done. I mean, we shouldn't forget that we want to cope with 100 times of capacity in the network, and that means network deployment, yeah? That means to deploy infrastructure into the network. And if you look at today, I mean, our return on capital employed is not very good, so our shareholders are not very satisfied with that one, so they put questions to us to say, okay, how can you deal with that, how can you justify additional investment in the network? Yeah, and that's a question which we have to attack also. But an operator can't consider not to afford 5G? No, definitely, but what we re would require is much more innovation also on this side. So there are a lot of areas where we say that, that in, in, in the deployment area there is not enough innovation. Let's take the example of, of uh, virtualization. Yeah, if we look at the core network, which will be virtualized first, um, then uh, there is basically no real substantial work on how should data centers look like, which will be the, the basis for, for implementing all of these software solutions. Yeah, and, and we need a bit different data centers from IT because we have real time, we have the different uh, throughput requirements, yeah, and that's something where we are working today uh, uh, with uh, uh, industry consortia because our classical vendors don't deliver on that one. Yeah, so we set up cooperation with other operators, with Facebook even, yeah, in this telecom infrastructure project to find new ways to get to cost-efficient solutions for deployment. You've identified gaps in necessary innovation. Is it up to individual operators to fill these gaps or should more be done at an industry-wide level? No, I mean, that's definitely an industry problem and we try to address that also in industry. Yeah, another example is, is the, the, the XRAM project, yeah, which addresses the, the, the problem which we have since 30 years, that we would like our base station suppliers to open up interfaces to the base station and within the base station. Yeah, and here we are working with SKT, we are working with AT&T, and uh, uh, the lead here has Stanford University, so they bring in the innovation yeah, and they, we try there to work together to, to define a standardized interface from the software to the hardware of the base station, to have a clear separation of user plane and control plane, yeah, and, and, and to have a much more flexible and open base station software architecture. There. Yeah, but that's always something which we do together with other players in the industry because times of operator-specific solutions are long gone now. So with the increase in open source, open software solutions, is it more a case of there'll be a long-term gain and long-term advantages, but the implementation in the short term means there'll be more pain? It's more effort on the short term, definitely, but we see that happening. And, and uh, we've seen that, look at the uh, uh, NFV with Open NFV, yeah, where we brought that together. Look what AT&T and, and, and Verizon are doing with their open initiatives. Uh, but even Etsy adopted now. Yeah, even Etsy took the first project where we said we will implement this standard as an open source project. Yeah, so, so, so that's also something where we say, okay, we need to drive that as a, as a new mechanism into the industry, yeah, but, but we, we shouldn't do it parallel to existing things. We should try also to, to embrace that very much, like in the Etsy concept. As operators look to fill the innovation gaps, they seem to be supporting an ever-increasing number of, of companies and startups looking at solutions, looking at new business models. Is it a bit like throwing spaghetti at the wall? You don't really know which ones are going to be successful, which are there for the long term. We basically, we back as many as we can and see which ones work. No, definitely, that's something which is new. That's something which is new. I mean, we, we are talking now about industrial customers. Uh, we are talking about a much broader base than just consumers. Yeah, and they all have their own developments in their businesses, they all have those things. But it's also something different what happens, because we are going more to software solutions, 
Yeah, so also on the network side, we are talking no longer about stovepipe uh, systems, but we are talking about software solutions. And in software, we can much more easily uh, 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 integrate also smaller companies. Yeah, because uh, the risk uh, to do uh, whatever, a 30,000 site hardware deployment uh, with a smaller company is much, much bigger than to do a software deployment, which you can change maybe within a couple of weeks or months. Yeah. So from Deutsche Telekom's perspective, what needs to be done now as an industry to ensure a successful launch for 5G? That's quite a difficult question. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, so I think um, first step, if we really talk about 5G, uh, then, then we are not talking just to adding a, um, a high spectrum radio interface. Yeah? If, if that's all what we do, then this is not 5G. Yeah? For me, 5G really means that we introduce flexibility in our network. Yeah, that we have the software-based solution, that we have um, network slicing, where we can build software-based networks dedicated to a certain industry, yeah, which helps us to, to, to adapt functionality to this industry, yeah, to have specific customer solution, but which helps us also to have a much higher innovation rate, because changes are only within that network slice. Yeah, so I don't need to bother any automotive industry because I have to upgrade something for my consumers in the, in the uh, enhanced mobile broadband size. Yeah, and, and that's something where I think that's really for me uh, uh, what 5G is about. Yeah, and, and that's what we need to drive with virtualization, with infrastructure, uh, data centers and that. Uwe, thank you very much indeed. You're welcome.